Pedro from the Imperial X, I'm here today with the great, with the gracious, with the legend himself, Mikael Stein from Dark Tranquility. How's it going? Hey, man. It's going great. Glad to be here. Uh, pleasure to talk to you, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me about the new record. Really excited to have this conversation with you. And I want to start off by asking you, moment, what, what moment does this album represent to you? Well, that kind of changed over time. Um, we started writing this album already last year, um, early last year even. And my idea for the title, because I wanted a title, I, I needed a title so I could start talking to Nicholas about the cover artwork. And he needed like a title to start kind of basing the, the artwork around. And I said, well, uh, it's, the songs are about the different paths that we can take, like how our past inform our future and the moment that separates the two, you know, and what do we make of it? And what is it about um, where we come from that informs our way going forward? So, and, it, and it was about that moment. And that was so that was the placeholder title for the longest time. And then uh, that's what we once we recorded started recording the album uh, here in February, uh, the pandemic hit and everything kind of changed and all, all the lyrics became more real in a way. And and I felt that we were definitely heading for, we were part of like a, an important moment in time, you know, and, and uh, for us. So it, it just kind of stuck, you know, and it could be anything, of course, but um, and there's a different meaning in Swedish that I, I have a hard time explaining. But, uh, but, but it's, it's basically that, like, you know, the, the, the intersection between the past and the future and what, what, what we kind of bring with us going forward. Basically, life is made out of moments, right? Yeah, yeah. And anything can happen. And, you know, the, the more prepared you are, the better. And uh, the more informed you are and, you know, all those uh, circumstances. So how does a Dark Tranquility album come to life? Like, where, what's the starting point? How is the process in the middle until you get to the time where you're ready to enter the studio and press record? Uh, it has differed, of course, over the years. But the last um, two or three albums or so has been, um, has started with simple songs, you know, that Anders, our drummer, writes or Martin, our keyboard player, writes. Just simple melodies, chords, structures, you know, um, that so that we have something to go from and have a starting point. And this time, uh, for instance, I I started writing lyrics as well, like just like, temporary stuff so that I, we have I had something to sing and so the other guys could have something to relate to or um, kind of form their opinion about the song on. And once we had... 10 or 15 or so songs where we felt like, all right, this is cool. You know, we have a good direction. We know where to go. And that took a couple months. We, um, we introduced those to Chris and Johan, the, the new guitar players, in order to, to have them like react to it and also to um, adapt it and, and change it and do it differently and all that stuff, you know. So, so that's how the process started. And then there was a lot of back and forth, like, oh, how do we do this? How do we arrange this? How do we make this uh, very impactful and, and all those things? So it was a very long process, yeah, starting early last year up until April or something like that, where we felt we were ready to, to record, um, or February rather. But it was, yeah, so it's crazy, a long time. But we need that sometimes. Like we've been on the road for three years, so we need kind of some time to relax and then kind of recharge and then head back into the writing mode again, you know? When you look at an album like Moment and you look at the track listing, I felt that the, you guys created the perfect track listing. When I look at those songs, it, I couldn't put them in any better order than the order that you guys put them together in order to give me that perfect balance from the beginning of the record all the way to the end of the record. How cool. much thought process does that go in for you guys when you're putting the album together? Because you have these songs and now you have to find that right balance, that right order. I mean, it, it goes back to the days of uh, making, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, tapes for friends, you know. How, how do you <laughs> program that in the perfect order? You know, it, it's important. You start with a certain track and you follow with something that is kind of up-tempo and then you kind of change it up a little bit. So, yeah, we, we do spend a lot of time 
trying to figure out what would be the best track order. And um, yeah, sometimes it's super difficult. Sometimes we kind of eh, almost agree immediately. And I think this time around, we we felt like, okay, we have a, a good opening track that we all could agree on. We knew how to end the album and we knew kind of second, third track and that. And then it's like, uh, and how do we mix it up and make it interesting all the way through? And uh, and I th- I'm, I'm glad you you noticed <laughs> that we put a lot of effort into that uh, because we did and, it, and it's fun. And, yeah, an album should be uh, listened to and enjoyed, you know, from beginning to end. I, yeah. I've always felt that way and I still do. And, um, you know, and yeah, we put a lot of effort into doing that. So hopefully people will appreciate it that way as well. Um, yeah, yeah I, I it, it's, it's, put, it's meant to, to be like that. I think you could have a great album with great songs, but if you don't put them in the right order, it takes huh. away from the quality of the record. It's almost like yeah. the album is not even the same. No. Exactly. And uh, I, I remember like being a fan, you know, when CDs started to be a thing, I, I was a fan, fan of like going shuffle after 10, 15, 20 listens just to change things up. But I don't really feel that way anymore. I never do it. I, I rarely touch the shuffle button on anything, you know, from streaming to anything. So nah, I, I'm not a fan. Like I, I want it the, the way the artist intended. Do, do you feel that the, the diversity of this album is one of its strong points? Or do you look at other elements of this record as the stronger points that this album has to offer? I think it's definitely one. Um, I I felt like we were doing something um, that was more honest, I think. Um, and we wanted it to be, yeah, diverse and also emotional. Um, we spent a lot of time kind of writing and figuring out, you know, like vocal melodies and such early on rather than, in the last possible second as we normally do. Uh, and then I think that helped to kind of shape it around um, melody and um, like and vocal melody in particular. Um, and yeah, I think the fact that it very much changes, like you said, like it starts out in a, in a, in a, in one way and it ends in a very different way. And I think that was something that along the way became very clear that we wanted to do. Yeah, it has a very interesting approach from that perspective. When when I look at Dark Tranquility and when I was listening to this album, I'm always reminded of how creative you guys are. I mean, you're within one genre, but when I start listening to your albums, I always know that I'm listening to your band. There's something very unique, very specific to you guys that you are within a group of bands, but you're completely <laughs> on your own island, if you will, as far as the way <laughs> you create music and the way you presented it to the fans. How do you see that aspect of your sound? What do you feel it's the defining point that makes it unique? I don't know. I, it's it's probably, you know, just because of the fact that we've been, like me and Anders have been, you know, with the band, of course, since the beginning. Uh, we have a certain, you know, way of thinking about music, certain way of, of talking about it, about talking music together. Um and we definitely are very kind of rooted in what we like, what we feel the band should be and what kind of melodies, what kind of songs, what kind of structures, you know, like you have like a preference, you know, or have, have a way of, of doing things. And and it's been the same, you know, for all these years. And of course, you know, we try really hard to, to kind of stretch out of that comfort zone, so to speak, and 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 uh, get inspired by other things and, and get um, influenced by other things. But it kind of comes down to 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 this um, kind of propensity for for certain melodies and certain moods, you know. And I think when when Martin Brenstrom joined, you know, uh, in '99 already, like since then he has grown as well into being more of a producer, where he he is the kind of the guardian of the dark quality sound sometimes in the studio, you know. Try as we might, you know, to uh, to to really kind of think outside of the box, but he will go like, no, 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 this is what what it needs. We need to focus on this and that, you know, and, and kind of set put the pieces back together in in the proper order, you know, in the proper way. Um, and I think that is what what keeps it. Um, sounding true to to our sound but also we have the option and and the the kind of um the will to always kind of expand anyway even though it, you, you will immediately recognize the the album as as being one of ours and and of course this time around that was a big issue of course we were thinking like how can we integrate two new guitar players into our sound and not make it weird you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. No, so we, I mean, so, and we are protective of it, of course. Like we, we care very deeply about what we've done for for thirty years. So it was a matter of like striking that right balance between what we wanted and what we felt, you know, the song should be, but also kind of introducing and incorporating, you know, these new great, uh, super skilled guitar players into it. You know, was it a smooth transition for you guys? I mean, yeah, I think it was. Um, it it took a few tries, you know, where you 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 have something and then you have Johan, for instance, like worked through a song and he had added a lot and you went like, wow, that is awesome. But it kind of stopped being a Doctor Who song there for a while. So let's put it back a little bit and then. So it was kind of like a back and forth, uh, you know, four or five times before we kind of settled on something that where we could agree that it was good. And um, so that happened a lot, but. So I think there's, this definitely was a learning experience for all of us, like getting to know each other musically and then figure out how to work together, you know, because as I said, like obviously we have a way of working since we've been doing this for, for such a long. So for anyone, it's difficult to come in and, and kind of uh, immediately be part of that, you know. And luckily we had a lot of time this time. We, you know, we had months and months where we could actually just like really, really work on songs, you know, properly. The, the guitars on this album, since we're on that note, we're talking about the guitar players, let's talk a little bit about the guitars. Uh, and, and correct me if I'm totally wrong on this, but I felt that the guitars had a little bit of a duality of, of purpose on this album. When I was listening to the record, I was getting a, a melody from the guitars, I was getting these incredible riffs, creating a lot of atmosphere, but at the same time I felt the guitars were in the background, creating a lot of stability to the overall sound that the tracks had. So they were not just uh, focus on one element in doing one thing of driving the songs mm. forward with their melody, but they were also concentrating on creating this incredible backdrop, almost a foundation, and and they were always working in parallel with each other. Do you see the guitar work that way on the record, or do you, or do you see it differently? Yeah, but that's really interesting, and I think that I haven't really thought of it that way, but but it totally makes sense because, um, well, you can imagine like Anders, who's written most of the songs he doesn't play guitar and martin who's written a lot of songs he doesn't play guitar either so you you write it in a certain way where you focus on melody rhythm chords you know um so you build that up first so so many of the songs were written like that just um for the longest time and then we added guitars you know or changed the chords or made it into proper guitars whereas at first it was just like some midi thing that we wrote um so yeah, definitely. I mean, and Martin, as a keyboard player, he thinks of it as yeah, as you said, like something that builds the the song up, and it's not just about being in the on the like, you know at the edge of the stage like riffing super hard. You know, that's not what he thinks about when he was writing songs. You know, so it it is different. But then since Johan and Chris kind of took over, you know, once we we felt the songs were there, that meant they could kind of attach their um, their signature kind of style to it and it make it even more kind of guitar oriented. So yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's, and you say it's a duality and I, I definitely agree with that. And I think, uh, um, maybe that's not really what we had in mind or thought about, but that's definitely happened. Yeah, it definitely worked that way. At least yeah. I, I see it a little bit that way. Uh, I'm with you. It, cool. Enough about guitars. We got to talk about your vocals. Uh, what do you prefer? Like, do you do you enjoy the clean vocals, the harsh vocals? Do you have a preference? Uh, when when you look at yourself in the mirror, which one do you see yourself as being better at, if that's even a possibility? Yeah, I, I've always uh, think been more comfortable screaming. You know, that was what I started out doing, and uh, I always loved that. You know. Um, and then, you know, early on, we, we tried because we wanted to be different. We wanted to change things up. And we felt like maybe, you know, the traditional death metal thing is a little bit limiting. So so even on Skydancer in 93, we, I, we had a ballad, you know, where I sang, you know, and I was just playing guitar at the time, but I wanted to sing. So I like to, to, to be able to express other things, not just, you know, the anger and the frustration that, that comes out in, in the death metal, you know. So... Um, so that's always been interesting to to change it up a little bit, not do it for the and do it for the right purposes. I uh, I feel, um, not not because it's easier and more accessible, and you know because then we're in the wrong genre anyway. So <laughs> you know, so it so it's a matter of of finding that balance. You know where where I feel a, a song will actually benefit from it, like using like a an emotional melody to kind of push the song forward, and then kind of add to that the the anger and the 
um, you know, aggression, you know, that that death metal vocals uh, supply. So, so for me, like, yeah, I, I feel more a death metal singer than I am a singer. So, but I, I do love both, and I I I, I, uh, I like the fact that we can experiment a little bit more, um, especially on this album, um, and and um, yeah, make it different, you know, and stand out and for 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 a, and make it a little bit different from our previous ones. I, I had goosebumps this album with your clean. Oh, good. Well, it was <laughs> Thank you. Like I, I was listening to the album. We were watching EPL in the basement, and I can't remember which track I was listening to. And my son was sitting next to me, and I was like, "You have to listen to this song." I put it on, and he stopped and he froze, and he, like he was just completely engulfed by it. And he's, and he goes, "Wow, there was all clean vocals." I was like, "Yeah, there's a lot of that on the record, and it's absolutely amazing." Like I, like cool. I said, I had I had goosebumps. <laughs> Good, thank you. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we've done things like that before, but I think we, yeah, we decided on this album to 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 experiment a little bit more with it. Also, we've been sitting right here since, you know, because of, um, yeah, restrictions. It was just like, what else am I going to do? We just demoed stuff like endlessly trying new things. And I could, you know, record three versions of a song and just send them to the other guys. It's like, how do you feel about this? You know, and instead of like doing that as an add on later on, it could be like a main feature of a song instead of just something that, yeah, uh, we added just because why not in the end? So that, that really helped. And uh, it made for, uh, made it interesting to actually, um, yeah, more produce the track you know normally we just write something it sounds awesome and then you sing on it and then fine we're done you know but this was especially like the last track of the album in truth divided started out just like a piano melody and a couple chords and then i wrote like vocal melody to that and we had no idea what it's going to be like is this a power ballad or is this a fucking <laughs> piano thing like it could be anything so it was just like one of those things where you're kind of worried like it it has to still feel like dark quality but it can't you know, go too far in any one direction. So it has to kind of make sense and also made sense, make sense on the album. You know, we didn't want it to be one of those kind of tracks that fall off and ends up on a, on a back B side or in Japan or something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I was, so that I was, was a challenge. When I was listening to it, I was wondering how do you define that track? Is it like a melodic death metal ballad? Is, is it a <laughs> melodic, melodic power metal ballad? I, I don't and, and then at the end of it, I was like, you know what? Uh, forget about trying to put it in a box. Yeah, yeah, I just think it's best. To it and enjoy it. You know what I mean? Just like, I, I think it's the best, the best way to approach it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'd leave it. Yeah, someone said like, yeah, this this new album is is so much doom metal. And I was like, I don't know. Okay, well, uh, sure. If you, whatever you say, <laughs> like, doesn't matter. I, I, I think I think there's there's a definitely from the previous record to this one there's definitely a change there's definitely a different vibe i wouldn't go as far as to say doom no uh, no no it you know. sounds weird to me yeah yeah I, I think it's i think it's far from from it uh yeah, what, but it just goes to show like people have very different kind of the reactions to it and uh, and i like yeah, that it, I, I think once you once you create art then it's really up to the interpretation of the people yeah. who are consuming it right oh yeah so for sure it almost stops being yours the moment that you put it out there for other people to to grab it so I can listen to something. My son next to me can listen to the same song and we have completely different ideas and we interpret the song in a completely different way. A lot of it has to do with our own uh, emotional baggage that we bring in into the experience of listening to that song. Of course. Goes back to, to the title of the, the album. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it goes absolutely full circle. <laughs> yeah. and, and one of the things that I felt about this record that perhaps to a lot of people, I hope not, but maybe to a lot of people will go a little bit under the radar is the lyrics. Because when you're listening to the album, you're so uh, concentrated on the sound, on the guitars, on the vocals, a different style of vocals, the construction of the songs. And perhaps the lyrics will go a little bit under the radar. And to me, I, I hope it's not the case because I really enjoy the lyrics on this record. Uh, I, I felt like you guys had interesting topics of conversation on the lyrics. They were impactful. They, they were representative of the world that we're in currently. And, and I and I thought there was a lot of stuff to digest there. There was a lot of introspective moments in those lyrics. Do, do you see them though? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean um, it's been a weird couple of years, you know. So um, just like getting that out of my system is, is is important for me. You know, I I spend a lot of time just reading and 
observing and taking in all the, the stuff that happens and, and, and somehow trying to, to make sense of it. And, and I've found like, to, to me, you know, the, my go-to way is to write about it and scream about it and, and hope that, you know, somehow, somewhere people will read it uh, and maybe feel the same way. But that's not the end goal. For me, it's just like getting it out there, like getting it out of my system and, and writing about something that, that matters so that I have something to scream about, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to just sound like this. You know? <laughs> so uh, so it's, 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 been, it's been weird and it, it always is. Do you, I always find something that just frustrates the hell out of me and uh, that I just want to, that I just like oh, I need to get out. And, and for me, this is the best way, you know. Just going down to the rehearsal room and just scream for a couple of hours is uh, it's like all, all I need to, to calm down and be myself again. It's therapy. It, it really is. I mean, it, yeah, obviously. I mean, it's it just, yeah, trying to make sense of things and, and, and um, yeah, getting, getting rid of a lot of negativity and anger. Um, it's good. And, you know, and that for, for me, that's what kind of extreme metal is for mm -hmm. in many ways as well, you know, just blast it super loud in your headphones while you have to do something super boring it's fantastic like it really helps yeah i don't think you can listen to it low i i sometimes i'm listening to it in the car and i forget to change the volume so i have it like on 25 out of 30 and yeah then when my wife walks in the car she goes you were listening to music that loud i was like there's <laughs> the only way to listen to it yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the way it is holy shit yeah absolutely that's why you have uh, yeah Good, good, like closed headphones or something like that. But yeah, exactly. yeah it should exactly. be loud. Yeah, uh, it has to be loud. Now, explain me, explain me this, because this really boggled my mind. So you guys are releasing the album with 10 tracks, then there's a 12-track release, and then there's a 14-track release? Actually, I saw you were talking about this, and it's it's not the case. There's been some kind of mix-up on iTunes. I think maybe, was that where you saw the 10-track version? Yeah, the 10 tracks I saw it on, on iTunes, the, the yeah. release that I received was the 12 one, and then yeah. I believe there's 14 as well, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the thing is, so it's either 12 or 14. So 12 is for every release. I think just iTunes screwed it up somehow, but it's going to be fixed. So I, I've already okay. talked to them, so, so that's not an issue anymore. Uh, but yeah, so there's 12 tracks on the album, and then for the limited... CD release like it's a box thing. I haven't seen it yet, but it's supposed to look super cool. And there's like a second CD that has some some weird uh, thing to it, and there are two bonus tracks on that one. So that's that's it. And then uh, then we have all the different vinyl colors, and then there's uh, our own kind of band version of a vinyl that we actually pressed ourselves uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, so those are the the different versions out there. How, how much work do you guys as a band put into all of this stuff? Like the the, the colors on the vinyls like you guys get involved with that whole process or you just create the music and then you step back and let the yeah. take care of it. it that has changed over the years i think um now more than ever we we are very much involved in everything like um especially because we can knowing that okay there's no tours <laughs> upcoming we might as well take in control over everything and that has been fascinating you know i have definitely have felt more like an office person than anything else because i've just sitting here all day just like answering emails but it's it's been fascinating to kind of be more um yeah more a, a part of, of that process as well so yeah so we all the cover aspects of of everything we've we've done together with niklas of course and then to make sure that we have the cool best coolest colors for all the diff, in different regions and special ones for special record stores that we like that kind of stuff and uh then since we did our own version here in Gothenburg, just 500 copies, we were able to, to kind of press them ourselves. We mixed their different colors at the pressing wow. plant and we made like the, the cover. It's, it's like the, the thickest kind of cardboard thing you could ever, if you can get. And it's gorgeous. It looks like a big ass book, you know. Um, and there's, uh, there's an art print that Nicholas did before the cover so it's like one of his early sketches so you can see how that was being constructed a poster and uh, we took polaroid pictures of the entire process of, of doing the records and also shooting some of the videos so everybody gets like a unique polaroid picture that's signed by the people on it so it, it's such a it's a cool cool um uh, edition of the album and it looks fantastic and being part of it and holding it and and like kind of ha having a warm record that has just been printed and still kind of hot and smelly it's amazing i love it it's 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 been incredible just be being able to do that you know and uh hope we get to do more of that in the future and uh yeah ha making sure that everything 
is perfect when something new comes out. It gives you so much more pleasure when when it actually is out. Like that, the reward is even better. You know. Did you guys consider pushing this release into 2021 because of the pandemic, or didn't cross your mind? No, nah, we we did push it a little bit. Uh, the um, we first wanted it to be out in May or something like that, so we can play some new tracks at the European festivals. But then when that didn't happen, we we kept on recording. Um, then we have had plans to do an American tour in September, yeah. so we wanted it to, to come out then. But since that didn't happen, we pushed it a little bit. So there were a couple of weeks where we pushed the release, uh, but it didn't make sense to push it until we can go out and tour again. I mean, that would be unfair to everybody, I think. And it, I, I couldn't even contain myself. I mean, that, that would be weird. <laughs> Not just shelving an album and having it sit there. That would be horrible. I couldn't do that. You, you would Plus, start I think songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, de- definitely. But oops, sorry about that. Yeah, definitely. And and I, I mean, I, I know how much it means to have you know your uh, records come out. You know that that helps so much in this uh, this year. You know, you need music that's like a good ex- escape from everything. So uh, definitely, we now. So n- that was never a consideration. Yeah, music has never been as important as it is now. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I would be absolutely climbing up the walls if it wasn't for all the new music that's been released this year. Yeah. It's incredible. And I think like, imagine like looking back on, uh, you know, 10 years from now or something like that or 20 years from now at all the weird collaborations and all this crazy music projects that's going to happen because of this, because everybody's super, super frustrated and just wants to be creative and do something. I've received so many um, cool um, (laughs) offers, you know, to, hey, do you want to sing on this? Like, should we form a band? Should we do this and that? It's like, yeah, why not? I have nothing else to do. You have time. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, for sure like for the first time like it's always been like oh that sounds interesting but nah it's, I, I couldn't but now it's like yeah let's do it it's awesome you're, you're a huge music lover when i saw you guys in toronto i saw you guys at the tour with uh with amorphous uh yeah. two years ago i believe was the, was yeah. that tour and uh, you guys were were the second band on the bill playing that night but i saw you in the audience checking out the other bands playing before you guys even got to go on stage uh, when you're when you're enjoying music, and I see you posting sometimes pictures of you playing vinyls when new vinyls are coming out, new bands are releasing records, you're listening yeah. to it. So you're a, you're a music connoisseur. So what for you makes a great record when you're listening to one? Ooh, um, I think oh fuck, that's it's difficult. But I, I would say like just an, an emotional impact. You know where you just go like oh man, oh okay this. I, I don't want this to stop, that kind of thing. Because I, I try to listen to everything that comes out every week. You know, every Friday is a, it's, it's a highlight of the week where you, new albums come out. But maybe you find one or two albums every week that is just like, hey, oh, hey, hey I'll, I'll keep this in rotation, you know, and check it out. Um, but but when it re- something really hits where you go like, oh, wow, this is amazing, you know, then then it has to you have to feel something, right? Um, and, so, and I think I... I've always been drawn to to more obscure stuff. So if it's too obvious, if it's too kind of simple and straightforward, and I go like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. And but if it's on a t- tiny little label and just released like two albums, two EPs, that piques my interest, you know, for some reason. I, I, I've always been like that. I don't know why. So I, I tend to buy mostly yeah albums by yeah small artists, smaller bands that are more obscure and weird and strange, just because it's I, I don't know. It's just fascinating and also listening to. Especially when you're in the in the writing process of, for an album, um, when you listen to a lot of like other you know metal, death metal, what what have you, you start listening for mistakes. You start listening for oh we should have done that or they should have done this because you're like you're constantly in that mode. So for me, sometimes I really need to listen to anything but you know what we do, you know, to to kind of take my mind off of things and and to be able to fully appreciate it for what it is and not you know deconstruct it in every <laughs> you know parts um but it's yeah i don't know like i i try not to collect too much when it comes to vinyl and records i just buy the stuff that i really really want that i feel strongly about but it's difficult <laughs> i have so much stuff ordered that I, just, I don't know where to put everything but it's fantastic <laughs> i love it <laughs> uh where do you see this album in the overall discography of the band but I, you know, I, I, I always kind of view our albums as time capsules, you know, um, this is where we are right now. This is, uh, what makes most sense for us to release. Um, and it's a continuing kind of upwards trajectory, you know, 
um, and so so maybe this is the beginning of something new. I don't know, like something that we started where maybe we are Toma, and um, and it kind of leads somewhere. I don't know, and I don't really see it that way. We kind of focus on the moment and what what is important right now. What is it that we want to say? What is it we want to um, do? Um, and and I think maybe, like the touring cycles that normally follows an album, I think that kind of defines how important it will be going forward in the you know the set list or what have you. Um, That's a difficult we haven't, one. I mean, the yeah, and we haven't really gotten that that far yet. You, you guys gonna have to play a two hour set. Ouch! <laughs> We're not young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> have so much material and now you have yeah. this album i don't even know how you're going to pick songs out of this album uh, it, it, it's really like picking your favorite children when, when you have multiples i mean for me yeah. it's easy when you have one but yeah. uh, you know I, I don't know how you guys going to do it with a set no, i i don't know either we 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 just started we've been rehearsing like crazy now and we are so we're playing all the songs just to see how that feels and um in three weeks time we're going to play the whole album live and um i'm very nervous about that <laughs> but, but it's going to be cool like and then we'll see like what feels right like what can we do when, when we start touring we'll see but uh so that's where we are right now um but but it's fun like i love that when when we start a tour we, and normally we do an american tour just when the album comes out right um and then we play maybe five or six new tracks and then we'll see like uh, did that work did it feel okay like what was the reaction you know and then we'll play some some different songs the next night and then we'll kind of you know gauge what what people feel uh or react to and and those are the songs that we we, we kind of keep in, in the set list i think and uh but now we really can't do that so uh we're just gonna play it all yeah. <laughs> uh, i have a couple more questions for you and they're not related to the album I, perhaps they were related to your other passion which is video games yeah is, is video games your second passion outside of music it's, it's definitely one of them like uh and but it's a pastime it's something that i just love it's like a, yeah it's like movies or tv or so but it's uh i've always, i mean when i was 10 i think like my cousin brought home like a spectrum computer like because his dad had them i had yeah. one <laughs> awesome the tape, was it was it the one with the tape deck attached to it mine had a tape deck attached to it i don't think there was a tape deck even uh, or maybe it was but it was with the tape deck of course and and rubber uh, keys and um, so that's how it started for me and and I've been a uh, avid gamer ever since. <laughs> I mean it's um, I and I I love it. I love the 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 creativity about behind games. I love how how crazy different it could be. You know, from one tiny little mobile game and then some indie cool game to you know the big AAA titles that are just crazy and take you uh, to hundred hours to finish. You know that kind of thing. So. I've, and I really don't have time to play all the games that I want, but I try, <laughs> you know, and I try to test everything. I just installed a new SS Creed um, game and I just bought a new graphics card today so that I could play it <laughs> to the full potential. Um, and yeah, and I just got into World of Warcraft again. Damn, you know, it's it's not good for me at all. But what can I, can I do? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. It's, it's tough. <laughs> it's, it's a tough world. Uh, yeah. There was a, a game out there that you were invited to do the soundtrack for. Yeah. What, what game would you love to do soundtrack for? Ooh, I mean, it would be cool just to have you know songs on 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 the soundtrack. Um, but we actually we actually did that. I I don't know if you know, but there there's this game coming out next year called Metal Hellsinger, and it's, and it's uh, and it's made here in Sweden by um, a company up in Stockholm who they're called outsiders because they were uh, because uh, they were a part of dice who makes the battlefield uh, series and uh, mirrors edge and such and some of the guys that are quit there started this new studio and i was approached by two guys from gothenburg uh who wrote some music for for this game and they said oh it's going to be kind of like a death metal game so we're going to write some music and do you want to sing on it and i was like Video games, singing, yes, I, I can do that, you know. But I didn't really know what it was at, at first. So then they said, well, it's kind of going to be like a rhythmic shooter. So it's going to be like Doom, but like Dance Dance Revolution or one of those, you know, rhythm games. It's like, that is super weird, but okay. So, so they wrote music and lyrics and, you know, vocal lines and everything. And the idea is that 
you run through this hellish, you know, nightmarish uh, levels that looks like, you know, the inside of the death metal album cover, um, shooting demons and all, all stuff, stuff. But if you do it in the, in the beat and to the music, um, the better you are, the more you get to hear. So you start out and you miss a few shots. Um, you only get to hear the bass and the drums maybe. And then if you start getting good, you know, and you do it uh, to the beat, then that will uh, uh, l- level you up a little bit, like in terms of the music and also, you know, this some some kind of, uh, you know, points counter or whatever it is. Um, and eventually you get to hear everything. And then on layer seven, it's me singing, you know, and screaming. So it's super cool. I've only seen demos, but it's fucking, it's a fantastic cool and it really works and it feels fantastic when you play it so so we started and i recorded two songs for that and we had a blast and it sounds great i mean they're really really good tracks and then uh they asked me it's like do do you think we can get another singer it's like yeah maybe you know i I could ask around if you want to they said oh it would be great if we could get bjorn from soil work and i was like okay i'll text him now you know and you know and then Two weeks later, he was singing for the next track. And then there was like, yeah, well, who else can we get? It's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, who do you, who do you want? And so they got like Alyssa from Much Enemy and Randall from, uh, from Lamb of God is, is doing it. And who else? Yeah, Matt wow. from Matt from Trivium as well. So, so it's, it's going to be like this amazing soundtrack of an album for sure. Who's pro- that's probably going to outsell the video game once it comes out. But, <laughs> but it's actually going to be super, super cool. So it's, um, it's called Metal Hell Singer, like the subtitle. And it's coming out next year. So, so for wow. me, it's kind of like a dream because it, it is a super cool shooter, first and foremost. And then there's some amazing music attached to it. So it's, uh, I don't know, like uh, it, it really is uh, a dream thing. And, and I couldn't be happier to be part of it. So can't wait to see it um, where they are right now. I haven't seen it in a month or so. Uh, but they're, they're chipping away at it and should be out next year. So it almost sounds like Guitar Hero meets Doom. But it really, it Hero, really is. Yeah, yeah. This guitar hero, when you miss the notes, right, you kind of yeah. lose the audio of the track. So if you miss yeah. a lot of notes, you, you can't even hear the song anymore. Yeah. You just hear think, the people booing you. No, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely going to be something like that without the, the crazy plastic instruments. <laughs> <laughs> without the guitar. Uh, yeah. I have to ask you, last question, and it's still about video games. My favorite video game is Assassin's Creed. Ooh. What's What's your favorite? It's it's what up there. I think uh, Odyssey was without a doubt the best one. I played them all, almost, yeah. And I think you know that was the pinnacle and such an amazingly cool. You know, makes you want to go on vacation in Greece. You know, and uh, um, and it was fun and kind of lighthearted, uh, but also kind of fantastical and cool. And and when everything is fun to do in the game, like even every traversal, every kind of riding through the mountains and on the islands was cool. I, I, I'm incredible. And, uh, and as I said, like I just installed Valhalla now, so it's ready to go whenever, you know, on, <laughs> in two days when it opens up. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I'm super excited. But for me, like, yeah, some of my favorites, probably like the Mass Effect series. Um, I love them. Um, I love, um, yeah, Last of Us, of course, like just powerful emotional kind of uh, narrative experience I, I love you know whenever you play that yeah. really looking forward to spider-man Miles morales that i'm getting day one of course like it's one of my favorite uh comic book characters so seeing that it's going to be awesome and um Did yeah you play sports ones like fifa and stuff like that or no yeah i'm not a really a sports guy so I'm, i really suck at all those games because i don't <laughs> really know the rules but uh but i like some of them and i but like it's i'm, I'm more like I play more Rocket League than I play FIFA, you know, <laughs> like different, different kind of football. <laughs> you know? sounds, good. sounds good. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mikael, thank you very much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank Blast you so much, Pedro. About the album and video games. Thank you for your time. Uh, once again, the album is just around the corner. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure you're counting the days. November 20th on Century Media. Moment Dark Tranquility will be available for everybody to purchase. A pre-order yeah. now. People can pre-order now. Get the vinyls. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then also, yeah, we're doing a live stream the day after. So the 21st. So on Friday, you buy the album. And on Saturday, we do a live stream where we play the entire album live. So you can check that out. And we're going to announce that in a couple of days. So it's going to be up there. Oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you once again for your time. Best of luck with this release. And hopefully this virus will be over soon. And I'll get to see you guys on the road again in Toronto. Absolutely. Oh, man. I miss Toronto. Yeah, we're coming. Yeah, we'll miss you guys. See (laughs) you. Awesome. Thank you so much.